Hello everyone, I'm Sergei Badelian, an oncology resident from Yerevan, Armenia. Today I'm joined by Dr. Juan Manuel O'Connor, head of the Department of Gastrointestinal Tumors at the Instituto Alexander Fleming in Buenos Aires. We are here to discuss his ESMO 2025 presentation, which is Treatment of Local Regional Digestive Neuroendocrine Carcinoma. Dr. O'Connor, welcome and thank you for being here. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me to uh, discuss about uh, this interesting topic that was uh, discussing during DEFSMO in Berlin this year. Thank you, too. Before we dive into our talk, I would love to start with your background and what drew you into neuroendocrine tumors. So could you please share a quick snapshot of your current roles and clinical focus and how you first became involved with neuroendocrine and gastrointestinal cancers? Yeah, um, in, in my role as uh, head of the department in GI oncology, I and also I specialize in neuroendocrine tumor. This is a, um, a new specialty, but uh, interesting to know that it's a very complex disease. So we we need to uh, discuss and also the MDT is conformed by not only oncologists, uh, it, it also important the the role of endocrinologists, cardiologists, uh, uh, for sure, uh, the surgical approach and also radiotherapy and radio ligands because it's a new area of treatment and promising uh, in the in the neuroendocrine tumor uh, in this field. So I think that uh, uh, today it is uh, very important and also the uh, discussions by the, the the medical doctors are also important to this uh, treating the treat these patients in a center of excellence or center of their preference in, in this uh, pathology due to the, the the complexity of the path pathology and also the new option new treatment options in this field uh, for our uh, audience like how would you describe the big differences between neuroendocrine carcinoma and neuroendocrine tumors? Because like we, of course, know that there are differences. How would you explain to our audience? Yeah, this is a, a very important because a neuroendocrine tumor is a, in, in 70-80% of the cases is a well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor. So uh, in general, it depends on the location of the primary tumor, but it's most indolent disease with a good prognosis for many patients, the overall survival, for example, for a patient with well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor is around 70-80% 70, uh, 70, of five years in an unresectable disease. But um, for sure, as I mentioned before, it's different, in, uh, for example, in, in colorectal, uh, a small bowel neuroendocrine tumor as a primary tumor. So uh, it, it is different. It depends on the location of the primary tumor. The other part of the story is the neuroendocrine carcinoma because it's a very aggressive disease. Most of the cases are uh, in, the, in the initial diagnosis with advanced disease. So the uh, median overall survival for many neuroendocrine carcinoma is around 12 months and the median PFS is 6 to 7 uh, months. So um, if, you, if you see data based on the overall survival, uh, clinical behavior, uh, clinical presentation, is uh, totally different between the neuroendocrine well-differentiated tumor and neuroendocrine carcinoma. It's probably the most, uh, the most aggressive and also a uh, bad prognosis for a patient with a neuroendocrine carcinoma. I see. And... I would also love to know when you say local regional digestive neuroendocrine carcinoma, which scenarios are you including? Like, is it clearly receptible disease or borderline receptible disease, or which which scenarios do you take? The setting of the local regional disease in, in a neuroendocrine carcinoma is probably not no the most frequent because, as I mentioned before, the advanced disease for many patients as a uh, uh, initial diagnosis, but in some cases with the uh, compromise of the localized disease of the uh, local regional disease, we have some uh, strategies. The surgical approach uh, in some cases with localized disease is probably one of the best options, but the problem is that uh, in a local regional disease, because the prognosis is different, 
is the better prognosis with, when the patient is a uh, more localized disease. And also very important, the location of the primary tumor, because we receive the patient in many cases after surgery, because we don't have the, the option to write diagnosis before to the surgical approach. Uh, um, I mentioned this because uh, in, uh, in this, the setting of the local regional disease, maybe the, the, the best strategy is systemic therapy and also the surgical approach. But in the clinical practice, probably it's a little bit different. And re we receive the patient after surgery. And the, the, the other question is, okay, after the surgical approach in neuronocline carcinoma, again, depends on the, the location of the primary tumor. It's not the same for colorectal, comparing, for example, for uh, anal canal or esophageal cancer, when the surgery uh, has another challenging in terms of the uh, morbidity of the surgical approach. So uh, in this uh, setting, for example, radiation or chemo radiation as the primary treatment maybe it's a better option than surgical approach. But uh, this is the complexity of the, even in local regional disease, in a patient with uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma. I see. Thank you so much for such a detailed answer. And now I would like us to talk about your presentation at ESMO 2025. Like, what was the central objective of your session? And who did you have in mind as the primary audience? Yes, I think that was very important because, uh, you know, this is a, a very challenging setting in the, in the neuronocline carcinoma. The audience was uh, mainly uh, oncologists, not only specialized in GI or net, general oncologists, because, you know, this is, uh, I would say, rare disease, the, the least frequent in terms of the incidence uh, when i talking about the, the, the neuroendocrine carcinoma mainly of the digestive system because uh, we had the um, neuroendocrine carcinoma in the lung cancer, for example, that is probably more prevalent, and also less than 10% in uh, gastrointestinal uh, or digest the digestive system. So the objective of this uh, educational session was uh, talking about uh, data uh, based on epidemiology of this disease, different registries, not, not only in the United States and also in many countries in, in uh, European countries. And unfortunately, there are probably less uh, or no, no many uh, data in Latin America because we have m m more difficulties in terms of the, the registry, at least registry based on, on population. Uh, but the, the other objective of the, of the session was discussed in terms of the, uh, how to is the best approach for localized local regional disease, how is the strategy for advanced disease in neuronocline carcinoma, and also uh, the discussion with the NEDG3. And to put in the, co in the context, NEDG3 and neuronocline carcinoma, this is what the objective of the, the topic this, uh, in this uh, very interesting uh, educational session during the ESMO 2025. I'm very like, interested, especially in the treatment pathway that you presented. Like, uh, maybe you can talk a bit more about it, how you sequence surgery with chemotherapy before or after surgery, and maybe uh, if you use radiotherapy, where you put it. Yeah. Okay. I uh, w one of the the, the key message of my presentations in terms of the uh, approach in local regional disease was to define step by step. The first step there was the clearly defined in terms of the pathology, NEG3 versus NEG. So it's very important to determine the uh, specific um, uh, pathology uh, report in terms of the uh, neuronocline carcinoma or NEDG3. That's, that, that is the, 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 the first. The second, to determine if the, is, uh, if the patient have some neuronocline carcinoma, pure neuronocline carcinoma, or coexisting with other histology, not neuroendocrine. This is the, to excluding the meaning, for example. This is the second part of the, uh, right, um, stratification for our patient 
in terms of the uh, define the best uh, uh, strategy option uh, in the in the setting of the the, the treatment, and then after the finding uh, in the local regional disease, the, it depends of the location of the primary tumor. For example, in many cases in colorectal cancer or a small bowel, for example, or in in some cases in, in other location, we receive the patient after surgical approach. I think there is still a role, important role for the surgery in this location for the primary tumor. But it's totally different, for example, in esophageal cancer or in anal cancer, neuroendocrine carcinoma or rectal neuroendocrine carcinoma, uh, which is probably uh, the best setting for chemo radiation therapy or radiation therapy before to uh, evaluation for surgical approach. That, uh, that is uh, uh, an important uh, message. It depends on the, the location of the primary tumor. It depends on the general condition of the patient. And also important to know the uh, response rate after systemic therapy if the patient receives neoadjuvant or perioperative treatment. I think that was the, uh, the most important um, or a key message, uh, uh, at least for my presentation, in terms of the local regional disease. For sure, we need better level of evidence for the future because many of this information is based on registry uh, of the uh, this pathology and also based on um, uh, retrospective data, multicenter uh, data, but we need to improve our level of evidence based on prospective uh, trials for the future. Uh, about the data that you presented and such a detailed like explanation of the treatment pathway, how do you think clinicians should interpret those points in their everyday practice? Or what practical guidance do you offer with that? Yes, it, it is important to know. Uh, I think that the, 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 um, the, the main uh, step is to discussion in the multidisciplinary team. We need to discuss with the surgeon, with the radiotherapist, and also with the uh, nuclear medicine, for example, in some cases, probably it's not the best uh, scenario in the, in the case of the neuronocrine carcinoma, but it also it is important to discuss with all team based on the clinical characteristics, location of the primary tumor, and um, defining, okay, w w what is the, the best approach for our patient. And the other important thing um, probably is related to um, the, the, the best team uh, with expertise in this pathology. And also the, very important, the role of the pathologist in terms of the define the uh, characteristics of the primary tumor or the neuronocaine carcinoma, because uh, it is important uh, in order to, uh, what is the, the defining the, the best approach for our patient. And I think for the general oncologist, it's also important to, to know the data based on the, uh, the, uh, the approach in local regional disease, but I see, but again, probably uh, we need to, to improve our level of, of, of evidence in terms of the uh, definition of the, the best strategy for our patient. But uh, the, this is, was the, the core of the discussion during the, this uh, educational session uh, in, uh, in Berlin uh, this year. And I would love to ask the final question, which is also about the practical uh, stuff for clinicians. If a clinician remembers just two changes from your talk to apply tomorrow in their daily routine, what are they? I think that the first is uh, re, uh, just to uh, remind uh, in terms of the, uh, the best uh, stratification of our patient, definition of the neuronocrine carcinoma versus NEDG3. Uh, it's a, the, probably one of the most important things. And then taking into account uh, the location of the primary tumor. If we have the patient in the digestive system, uh, around the 10% of the neuronocrine carcinoma, the surgical approach is, uh, approach is part of the strategy. And in some location of the primary tumor, as, a, a, as I uh, mentioned before, esophageal, anal canal, or rectal cancer, the uh, multimodality treatment based on radiation or chemoradiation before 
to the discussion of the surgical approach is the, the best setting. So the pathologies and also location of the primary tumor and the multidisciplinary uh, team discussion uh, before to uh, decide the, the strategy in, in our patient with local regional disease in, in neuronal carcinoma. Thank you so much. It seems excellent and very good advice for clinicians, especially from your side. Thank you so much, Dr. Connor, for your time joining me today and having uh, your insights from ESMO 2025 meeting. And also, thank you for translating them into practical steps. I'm Sergei Padelian. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Have a nice day. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.